Hi, I'm Luke Dicker. I compose for, for films, and I do that most of the time for the symphony orchestra. It took some time because nothing happened after my effect. But then at one day, so somewhere in uh, a few years later, I'm, I'm, I'm working late. Uh, so I, I think it was around in my, in my house at 12 o'clock, something like that. There were some guys in my house living there that I uh, liked and they didn't, they couldn't really pay the rent so much. So they helped me cleaning the house. The scene was that I was about to finish my work of composing, and uh, one one guy was vacuuming the 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 studio, and then the phone rang. He was looking at me to pick up the phone. I said, "Oh no, this is fine. This is uh, probably he has the wrong connection, so middle of the night or something." He didn't answer. And he didn't respond to that, but he went to the phone. I picked it up. He listened. And then he gave me the phone, Hollywood on the line for you. <laughs> and that was a guy who called himself Joel Schumacher. <laughs> By then he was uh, directing, but also producing. And for Universal, he produced a movie that later was called, uh, that had a f or the, or the working title, but ended up as Slow Burn, featuring Eric, Eric Roberts, Beverly D'Angelo, and uh, very young Johnny Depp. It was uh, maybe it was not his debut movie, but it was very early. One of one of his first. We are already going to talk about the trial later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me if I would be free in the, in the coming weeks, and uh, I said yes. And so if he was asked me if I would like to come to L.A. and talk about a movie, and he said yes. And, I said, you all Dan, uh, we'd like to meet you in two days and we make sure you get the tickets. Uh, we'll be at the airport and uh, everything will be arranged. And I stepped in the plane. That was a cool phone call. Yes, that was a cool phone call. <laughs> <laughs> you should thank your, your, your friends like a lot of times. Yes, <laughs> but you know, it started off when I was taking a walk and then that walk came brabby to, to the in, in 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 the wind and the and the and the heavy rain and talking to some people you know so uh, you should walk more often right yes you are always walking Pe people now. people should walk yeah. yeah yeah you should walk and meet people yeah, yeah. that is it, it's about meeting people it's about meeting people whoever it can be because it you know this, this he was not a big shot but he was working on a movie and he got the idea, okay, well, it might be that this guy could compose the music for, uh, for Paul. But he had an idea that could be a combination, you know? Yeah, yeah. So whoever you talk to, it's okay, you know? It's, uh, There's always a connection. You don't you have make. to talk right away to, uh, to, to, to the studio boss or to the director. Talk to, you have to talk to somebody and you never know what, what, what's coming it's after. It's true, yeah. Super Talker, true. yeah. So go to the Shortcuts Award show and talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> so you arrive in Hollywood two days later to meet uh, 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 Joel Schumacher. Joel and Schumacher and Matthew Chapman, uh -huh. uh, the director of, uh, of the movie, who, of course, he was the one that wanted me uh, on, on, that, uh, on that movie. Yeah. And all because they saw the fourth man. Because they saw the fourth man and they, they saw it by themselves. Okay, the, the movie that they had uh, was a sort of film noir movie. But it, it was not in the film noir period, but it, the themes were kind of the same, you know. Uh, not, nothing looked like it was. A whole lot of suspense, waiting for a message. They had to pay a, a ransom for that the kid would be released. Uh, well, the kid was killed, of course, uh, because it was a real film noir, say my, uh, yeah. like that. So Jenny, uh, Johnny Depp was out of the movie very soon because he was killed. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and uh, they hear it in my music as well, that I'm a jazz musician originally. And you know, the jazz feeling uh, is elementary for, uh, for film noir, you know? Uh, La Chassure Police Chiffaud, you know, that movie, that's a real film noir. Miles Davis, who, who did that 
that score, just improvising his jazz there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very suspense in general. Yes. Jazz, I think. So you were now doing your Hollywood career and you stayed there for a while. It wasn't just for that film, right? No, well, there, there was a personal thing there. That they said that I got to do the sort of divorcing. Uh, I was not married, but you know, after if you have kids, it's, you could call it a divorce as well. That kept me busy for some time. And I, I also decided, okay, I'm, maybe I should go to, uh, to Hollywood now. But I have to make a choice, you know. I have two daughters, they are five and seven. If I go to Hollywood right now, probably will will lose a lot of them. I didn't think that was a good idea. So I I waited and I, I was keeping contact with Hollywood and I, I did movies in Hollywood, but I did not live in Hollywood. I, I tried to make my presence as, 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 as solid as possible. And I had an agent, but I didn't go there. That was later, uh, when they grew up, you know, a little bit, and uh, it, it was still difficult. But I uh, decided, okay, uh, we go there for for some for some time, and, and we were left there. We, we lived there for three years, being back as well sometimes for a few months, you know, this kind of life. But we, we lived in the in, in California. We, we bought a car. We rented a house. <laughs> Got our social security numbers, got an American driver's license and uh, the insurance to that bloody car. <laughs> Getting member of uh, AAA in case he would break down in the, in the <laughs> desert, whatever. So we lived in California, yeah, really, in, uh, in LA. And we loved it, living there in the, in, in the good climate. Any good stories from that, uh, your Hollywood period? Um, well, I have to think where to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I had this agent uh, who became a friend, uh, as a matter of fact. So he hooked me up for some time. And, so, so, and I, I got uh, to speak with a lot of people, like the musical directors. I, I met all the musical directors of, the, of Universal and Paramount and Warner Brothers. And, uh, that that was it was called Canon by then. Uh, that was was late. But later was Harvey Weinstein. You know this. Yeah. Canon was the first company they had. He had to, together with uh, with his colleague. And they they had and they had the musical director as well. At, at, so I was meeting all these people. I, I was meeting also people like Bones Howe. You have you heard his name? No, because in the music industry he's. He's like Phil Spector for uh, for for yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. same sort of guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but more intellectual and uh, producer, artistic producer. Uh, everybody knows him in, in the publisher's business, uh, like yeah, like this. Yeah. So I was speaking to these guys, and I I met I knew him already, Paul Williams, the director, mm -hmm. and he introduced me uh, to. Uh, to the whole Hollywood life, sitting at the pool at uh, at Karen Black's, uh, dancing with Betty Midler, and uh, <laughs> those kind of of partners uh, of of parties, you know. That was the, that sounds like a very good moment too. Yes, yes. You know, I got really into a sort of, of Hollywood life. And which kind of difficulties you encounter when you stay there? The, the most difficult thing was that you go there to get a job and to get involved. Well, okay, socially that that worked very good. I had friends there and worked. But there was not a heap of of of, uh, of commissions for movies coming on, so you have to work on that. So how do you do that? I'd like to compose. So. That was difficult, and so I learned to, to keep myself busy with other things. Commissions had to come up, you know, these kind of yeah. things. The difficult thing is if you go there, yet you are sort of uh, not unemployed for the, for the time being. I didn't like that so much. That had maybe to do with the, the, the point in my career, because I had a career in, in, uh, in Holland, and now I was starting a new career, you know, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. It's all depending on what you got in your head. Basically, uh, I'm a composer. I am also a media composer because I, I did a lot of movies, which are like fun. But, but basically, uh, there, there is more worlds. Being a composer means that you write for, uh, 
for for people, for yourself. I started off composing for my own band, you know, and and making my own musical theater plays and having a lot of fun with the musicians, you know. And that that's all very personal. Then you get more commissions for other people, and that also is personal. But then when you start writing for the movies, that's not so personal. That's working in the industry. And that's another feeling. You you don't work with people on on your on your level that are musicians or or, or close to the music. You work with people, uh, producers uh, who are, are in corporate businesses. So that's a different uh, different life. And that's also one of the difficulties if you want to go in the industry. You have to realize that's an industry. You know, it's uh, it's not so much about the music. If they can use you, you want something they can use, and and and. It could be use music or whatever, you know, that you have to realize that, uh, that, that that is the case. And of course, this is all translated to, uh, through people who have, or who do the real work, like the cutters uh, in, in, in the, for the movies, or, and the directors, and the, 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 those people who are, if you're lucky, are artistically uh, demanding and, and, and bring you something. But basically, you, you work in an industry, and that, that, that makes it difficult if, if you're used to a more personal thing in life. And for me, personally, uh, I'm a composer. I work uh, with love uh, for, for musicians, for jazz musicians, for my own band, for other jazz musicians, or. Uh, Whatever musicians, yeah, working in the in the in the in, in the industry, uh, yeah, that that's that's difficult. It's it's a, it's a di different game. Uh, well, if it's your hometown, of course, it's easier because you you know people. you, you yeah. know people, you know how to behave. Uh, if you go somewhere else, you you might you you can you can make social mistakes uh, galore. Yeah, yeah. 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 I hope you enjoyed this episode, don't forget there is more to watch!